Welcome to the Uncle's Channel. Thanks for watching today, and we are finally getting the second wave of Turtles of Grayskull, which is, of course, the mashup of TMNT and Masters of the Universe. And we always knew, like, Wave 2 was going to come. It was just a matter of, like, when it's going to happen, because Michelangelo was not part of Wave 1, and um, obviously he has to be included, as well as some core uh, Masters of the Universe characters. And so, like, we knew Wave 2 was coming, but we finally have our first look at it here, and every figure is revealed. But um, as far as like detailed artwork goes or detailed pictures of the figures, we only have details of maybe like seven of the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, ten, eleven figures total. And so um, we got a good number here. So we're going to go through the detailed figures first and then sort of the, um, I guess, pixelated or distant version of the ones that are uh, remaining here. But we're going to start things off with pretty much a match made in heaven when it comes to this. And we have Bebop and Rocksteady put together as too bad for Master of the Universe. And I mean, like, look at this. This is just like a perfect design as far as like mashing up personalities of the two franchises, uh, imagery of the two franchises. This is a great figure. Of course, Bebop and Rocksteady are the two heads on the action figure, and they are attempting to make the hairstyles match up with Too Bad as well. One of the creatures on Too Bad back in Masters of the Universe did have like a little mohawk, and the other one had like sort of a, uh, a messy blue hairstyle, I guess. And that's what uh, Rocksteady's having here, even though I don't think Rocksteady's ever had a messy blue hairstyle. I think they're just sort of trying to, uh, you know, mash the two franchises together. But overall, a really cool looking figure, and um, it's just a great idea, and just such a perfect, perfect... Uh, blending of the two franchises. Now the second one we're going to look at is going to be Casey Jones and Casey Jones looks like a pretty legit like just good Casey Jones action figure but he is mixed with some uh, attorney armor here like his giant uh, hockey glove definitely looks like something that man arms might craft even some of his weapons like this giant hammer or his little mystery iron looking weapon in the back definitely looks like attorney armor or attorney weapons but then he has like these mystical um, you know hockey stick as well as like a mystical axe I don't know the story behind it, and even like his uh, hockey mask, but he definitely has like the attorney armor mixed in there, like his giant hockey glove off to the side, looks like something that man arms might craft, or like the giant hammer in his hockey sack, or even the hockey sack itself looks like something from Eternia, but then he has these mystical weapons, like his hockey stick here, or his axe back there, I don't know, he's a very interesting looking figure, I'm not sure like the Lord are going to do with that, but um, I feel like if you stripped most of the Eternia stuff away, it's just a good looking Casey Jones action figure, and I'd be interested to see, like, can you take the hockey mask off? Can you not? What's behind the hockey mask? I don't know. Overall, a pretty good figure. One I probably won't pick up, but still a, uh, a good looking figure. And then we have another version of Leonardo. Now, Leonardo was in Wave 1, but they're doing a stealth ninja version of him here. And it almost looks more like a uh, grave warden or a prison warden because he's got his little keys down there jangling and you know, has a little hood over his head. It's a cool looking action figure. I probably won't pick it up, but you know, it's a different take on the first one at least. Then we have a really awesome one here. It's like Leatherhead mixed with like the Snake Men or like the Snake People from Masters of the Universe. And like they really did a great job of mixing those two characters together. It definitely looks like a blend of like a snake and an alligator. And I know those are sort of similar in general, uh, you know, design wise as far as like a reptilian skin. But it is a very much of a natural look here. It has a little hat off to the side, you know, a little uh, alligator trap or a little bear trap as well. I don't know what this little piece here is, uh, maybe like a shoulder, you know, a little shoulder um, armor. I'm not really sure, but a really cool action figure. And I don't know, just a, once again, almost could pass as like just a genuinely good leatherhead action figure. Even if it wasn't mixed with Masters of the Universe, I feel like you could just sell this as a Ninja Turtle figure and it would also do pretty good. And now we finally get Michelangelo. And I really can't say like I'm a huge fan of the uh, Michelangelo look here. Like, it's obviously He-Man mixed with Michelangelo, has a little blonde hair, you know, sort of coming down. But, man, it just doesn't look good on Michelangelo, in my opinion. Yeah, he's got the uh, turtle shield, just like the rest of the turtles had. Got his nunchucks over here. I don't know, like, I just really don't like to look at this figure a whole lot. Even, like, his little smile. Like, I know it's still Michelangelo, has that personality, that charm. But, like, every time I see it, all I can think of is uh, Chris Rowe from the Ataris back in the uh, Ataris heyday. I don't know, like... It's just not my favorite of the Masters of the Universe uh, Turtle crossover. And then we have one like I'm really mixed on here because like I love Splinter. He's like one of my all time favorite turtle characters, but like they've made him like so buff here and so muscular. Like it just doesn't feel like Splinter anymore. Like Splinter's like always an old man who's still got like a little bit of a kick in him. And like this just feels like a young, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger Splinter. I just, I don't know. It's weird. I do like the little cape that comes with it. I think it's a cool looking cape. I almost have to see it with the cape on. It might like take away some of the, um, you know, overall bulk of him. But um, at the moment, 
I'm pretty mixed on the Splinter figure. And then we have April mixed with the uh, Sorceress from Masters of the Universe. Has a giant hammer scepter off to the side. And um, I really do like the wings on this. But there is something about April's hairstyle that I just don't like when it's mixed with the um, little bird hat that's coming across the top. It just doesn't flow well, like pretty much at all, at least to me. And um, also like her little armor down here looks, looks like a Power Ranger almost to a degree. I don't know, like there are aspects of this figure I like, but as an overall, I'm not really um, satisfied with what they did with the April and Sorceress crossover. But now let's take a look at some of the other figures that were not like given an individual showcase, but were still like at, you know, display like toy shows or like on the back of the box and things like that. Now the first one we do have is Skeletor and um, very interesting like uh, samurai armor here very much of a different look for him obviously you know trying to combine like shredder and skeletor together and so you know a good little mashup here you know definitely has some of the uh, samurai look to him but at the same time keeping the uh, traditional skeletor uh, glow about him it almost reminds me of like the um i don't know i had a growing up a glow in the dark um uh domino set and like it was based on like a graveyard the color scheme for skeletor here reminds me 100 percent of that uh, little domino set that i had and you can comment down below if you also had that growing up or if you even know like, what the heck I'm even talking about. I'll try to put a picture of it here um, in the video. But let's take a look at the uh, back of the box figures. Now these are not going to be anywhere near as detailed. We can't see like hardly anything about them. But we're going to go through them pretty quickly here. We do have Tila off to the side. And um, I can't tell a whole lot about Tila. She does have the uh, turtle shield. As well as looks like one of Raphael's um, size. You know the giant ones from the original figure. Can't tell a whole lot. We also have the uh, stealth ninja He-Man. Obviously more of a uh, good guy He-Man, you know, contrasting the bad guy He-Man that we had in the last run. So a, um, a good little change of pace there for He-Man. And then we also have Merman down here. And uh, Merman's got like a little bit of a samurai look to him. I'm not sure like what he's a uh, combination of. Maybe that, um, who's that snake character in TMNT? I can picture him. I know what he looks like. I know the action figure. I can't think of his name. Skeletal? I think it's Skeletal. I'll, I'll once again, you know, try to put the picture here in the video. But um, possibly a combination crossover with them two. Then we have Hordak down here at the bottom right. And I don't have a clue what Hordak's going to be a crossover between. Because Hordak just looks like a Hordak in that uh, particular picture there. And so I can't tell what's going on with Hordak there. But um, anyway, so those are all the figures in Wave 2. Which one do you think is the best? Which one do you think is the worst? Let me know in the comments down below. And ooh, looking at the back, back of the box here, you can definitely see... The um, mask does come off of Casey Jones, so that is something to note. What is Casey Jones going to look like behind the mask? I am excited to see that. But of these figures, I am probably most excited if I was going to put down for one of them, probably uh, Leatherhead. That's probably my favorite one of this particular line. I think the best idea was probably Too Bad, named uh, appropriately Too Bop Steady. <laughs> That's a good little name for him. That's fairly clever. Um, whoa, Splinter is called Splinter Skull. Oh, you know, like he's splintering his split in the skull. That's that's clever too. I don't know. The back of the box is revealing some interesting things here. Actually, that's the only things that it revealed. Looking more in depth at it. But like I said, Leatherhead's probably the only one I'm like super interested in getting. But I think the best idea for a character was Two Bop Steady. But let me know in the comments down below which ones you think are the best. As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Check out my other videos, list stuff above, and go out there find a great game to play. Simply have a great rest of the day.